Uh, hey, my name's Chris Desmond. I'm going to be on the online prosperity show and today we're going to make it easier for you to get out of your comfort zone. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show. And today we got to have help you get out of your comfort zone with Chris. Chris, how are you doing, my man? Prosper, I'm good. Thanks, mate. Thank you so much for having me here today. Absolutely. Hopefully we will be out of our comfort zone after this um, episode as if you're watching this uh, show right now, you would acknowledge that it's much easier to remain within the boundaries of where you feel comfortable in life. I mean, when we're born, we're always cocooned um, by our parents. We're cocooned in the tummy. We're cocooned by our environment and every uh, person around us. But we fear to venture beyond that. And Chris and other um, successful uh, business people know that outside or at the edge of your comfort zone, that's where good things actually happen. So, you know, if you're limiting yourself and um, you really want to do more, be more or achieve more things, I think this episode is definitely going to put you outside of your comfort zone. Now, Chris, tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually got started um, with your post podcast, Uncomfortable is Okay. Cool. Thanks for the question, Prosper. I'm going to take it right back to the start, mate. So I was, was born in New Zealand uh, back in 1983. So I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s here. And like most Kiwi kids, um, I was pretty good at getting physically uncomfortable. I, I went out and explored, spent a lot of time outside uh, and played a lot of sport as well. So I was always kind of challenging myself physically. One thing uh, as, as a general rule, one thing that I don't think that we did well as young Kiwi males was push outside of our comfort zones from a mental or an emotional standpoint. So I was, I was always found that quite challenging. But growing up, uh, you're, you're faced with multiple different new things that you have to overcome and you, you have to uh, kind of learn about so that you can keep functioning in life. And so I got reasonably good at stepping outside of my comfort zone. Uh, went to university down in Otago here in New Zealand, did my physical therapy degree, came up to Wellington to work as a physical therapist. And then for some reason, which I'm not quite sure why just yet, uh, figured, okay, cool. This is, this is what life's all about. You go to school, you go to university, you get a job, then you just sit back and life happens. So I, during that time, I really operated from within my own comfort zone. Uh, I went to work, I hung out with mates, I played a bit of sport reasonably socially and partied. And in and of itself, there's nothing particularly wrong with that, but it didn't fulfill me and it dragged on for a good few years. I was sitting in this really kind of fixed mindset place that this was it, this was my lot, this is what I uh, what I needed to do. And I ended up being pretty unhappy, unhealthy and unfulfilled really. And it took me a while to, to kind of come to the point where I realized, I was like, what, what is wrong here? There's got to be something more. And I realized that I, I hadn't been challenging myself in any way. And I thought, okay, cool. I need to go out and start to start to challenge myself, start to, to kind of push myself a little bit and step outside of my comfort zone. And when I started doing that, because it had been a few years since I had previously challenged myself and step out, stepped outside my comfort zone, I was nowhere near as good as what I used to be because I hadn't been training myself to do it. So I found it quite, I found it quite challenging. So I, I kind of progressively just took on, I took on some really small challenges to start with, like getting back into running uh, or kind of sticking my hand up at work a little bit more, more often. Uh, and then that kind of progressed once I'd, I'd started doing that and become better at, at those small steps out of my comfort zone, I could take the next step out and then the next and then the next. And to cut a long story short, that kind of culminated in, uh, in the creation of the Uncomfortable is Okay podcast a few years ago where I, uh, I was like, I want to start something for myself that I have creative control over, but that I can, I can teach people, I can learn, uh, and I can interact with 
really interesting, fascinating people uh, all the time. And uh, the, the, yeah, the topic of comfort zones was, I, I felt really interesting for a podcast based on the personal experience that I had and the struggles that I'd faced stepping out of my challenge, uh, comfort zone, but also from the fact that it gave me the opportunity to talk to a really wide range of people. Um, and we were talking just before we started recording that, yeah, I get to talk to some, some business people, some entrepreneurs, some CEOs, um, some general managers of companies, which is fascinating. But I also get to talk to athletes and authors and actors and adventurers and mums and musicians because everyone has a comfort zone and everyone's story is different. So different parts of people's stories resonate really well with, with different listeners. But actually the strategies that people use to step out of their comfort zone, whether they're a CEO or whether they're an actor, are often quite similar in the, the way that they overcome the, the challenges. So that's kind of, that, that's sort of the backstory and kind of what led me to, to Uncomfortable is Okay as a, as a podcast. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that um, elaboration there, Chris. Now, you did mention while we were, um, you know, you know, in your uh, beginning story there that you do speak to a number of people from all walks mm. of life and different um, genres and they're doing great things within, you know, their lives and have stepped out of their comfort zone. What do you find as a common thing that um, stops others from uh, venturing outside their comfort zone? I think, um, I mean, if we talk about a comfort zone and what a comfort zone is to start with, I think that uh, that's quite helpful because a comfort zone, a, it's a behavioral space that we operate it within um, for the most part. And to be honest, there's, there's nothing wrong with operating within your comfort zone for a, for a reasonable amount of time. It, it is just important to get outside of it at, at some times. So it's the behavioral space that we operate within that our actions and our behaviors follow a, a reasonably routine pattern that we feel uh, keeps us psychologically safe. So the comfort zone doesn't always, it doesn't always equate to uh, keeping us safe from an actual real physical threat. Rather, it's keeping us safe from our perception of threat or our perception of risk. So the, one of the, or a couple of the big things that I find really stop people from stepping out of their comfort zone is one is that the uncertainty of what's out there is that they know, people know what's in their comfort zone. Um, obviously they're comfortable with it because they feel safe doing it. And examples of that are, um, say for example, driving to, driving to work or driving to the office everyone has a typical route that they're comfortable with and that, that they're comfortable driving along. To step out of your comfort zone slightly with that would be just to, to take a different route. And usually that's not, that doesn't give people too much uncertainty around, around doing that. But um, <clears throat> if we kind of use another example that say someone's, uh, someone's a runner, so someone is really comfortable running 5Ks but then they decide, okay, I'd, I'd love to do a marathon, but I'm really scared of doing that because there's so much uncertainty there around, hey, what steps do I need to take to do it? Am I physically going to be able to do it? Do I have the time commitment to put into that? So the big thing is, is the uncertainty, I think, for people. Um, and that uncertainty generates a certain amount of fear within people as well that and and also a, a reluctance to change as well and step away from what they what they know and try something different so that's the, that's one of the big barriers and another barrier that i see with people that struggle stepping out of their comfort zone is that they don't know which direction to step out of it in that Obviously, I mean, most, most of your listeners, uh, I'm sure, have seen that uh, the internet meme where there's that little circuit with the com comfort zone down there and then there's a little circuit with the magic up here. And some people know that, yeah, the comfort zone's here, but they aren't sure where that magic sits. 
So if the magic sits down here, but they don't know that it's there, and then they go out this way, then they're not they're not moving towards it. So part of it is part of its uncertainty, part of its fear, but part of it also is that they don't have a direction to step out of outside of their comfort zone. That they need actually a little bit of strategy around figuring out a, the first step to take. Absolutely. So obviously, from what you're saying, is um, if somebody enlightens themselves or is aware of how to step out of it, you know, things may start happening. Now, you did mention, um, you know, um, when early on that it's usually the perception of what somebody thinks is their comfort zone and they're happy within that sort of space. Um, based on maybe your story, um, what would have been the opportunity cost had you not um, ventured outside of your comfort zone? What would have been not happening in your life right now that is happening just because uh, you've gone out of it. The reason I'm asking this question is some people don't understand or know why they need to mm -hmm. step out of their daily uh, standard uh, procedure like you yeah. were saying earlier on. Yeah, good, good question, Prosper. Um, there are, there's a lot, mate. I could talk to you on, on this for, well, probably another hour or so, but kind of to give you, to give you a rundown about things that, have, that I've stepped outside of my comfort zone for, um, one, I'm married. Two, I have, uh, we've got a wee six month old boy. They're both massive steps outside of my comfort zone. Um, own a house in Wellington here. That's another big step outside of your comfort zone. We have a dog, which is, I was actually quite uncomfortable as well. Um, but yeah, she, she lights up our life too. So, um, traveling all around the world. We went and backpacked through South America for months at a time, which was quite uncomfortable. Um, been to traveling around Southeast Asia and Japan and to, to Nepal and, and to a range of other places as well, which wouldn't have happened if I hadn't taken the opportunity to, to step out of my comfort zone. Um, and also, I mean, the great example is the, is the podcast as well, is that I would never have started that. I'd never be talking to you today about this topic. Um, and I wouldn't have, have started off a, a business around it as well. So I think that like, if I had just kept on going on that same trajectory, I would still be unhappy, unhealthy and unfulfilled. Whereas I've, I've been able to go and do all this cool stuff and have these amazing experiences because I've stepped outside of my comfort zone. But if I'd looked at that right from the start, when I was in this, in this place where I, I wasn't doing great and I'd said, okay, go for all of this stuff. That would have, that would have been a step too far for me. I, I wouldn't have even been able to comprehend where I am now. But the fact that it's just been kind of small incremental steps outside of my comfort zone has meant that, hey, this stuff is, it's still uncomfortable for me to, to do at times, but it's just the next step on the journey rather than that giant leap. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, congratulations on all your achievements so far. This is all exciting to thank hear. You, and all, all because you stepped out of your comfort zone and um, that's, that's remarkable. Mm. Now, Chris, um, I think it was the legendary uh, Les Brown. He said that a lot of people uh, die with books inside of them, music still inside mm. of them, movies inside of them. And um, he has actually uh, coined the phrase that the graveyard is the richest place in the world because all those ideas just go with people to the grave mm. before they have done anything with that. Um, some of the people that you talk to are well advanced in, in their, maybe in their employment or in their businesses. And you did mention that the strategies that everybody use are sort of the same to get out of your comfort zone. Now, are you able to share with us a couple of strategies that somebody can, um, you know, start having a happier existence just like you now do because you've gotten out of your comfort zone? Mm, definitely. And I, and I think probably the first, the first thing for the people to do prosper is to actually understand the direction that they want to head in. 
And whether that's, hey, they've got an end game in mind that they know, hey, this is what my magic is, whether that's uh, having a business or whether that is um, kind of having a family or climbing Mount Everest or whatever it is. Or even, hey, it's a general idea that I want to get into creating some content or um, I want to get better at running or get better at managing my financials. That having that, having that direction gives you the, the first step that you can take in the process. If you, as I said before, if you don't know the general direction that you want to go in, then it's really hard to decide a, a first step. And one thing that I, I, I use with people um, that kind of don't know that general direction um, is a little bit of a worksheet where you go through the different aspects of your life, whether that's um, kind of your, your physical, your financial, your, your mental, your emotional, um, your, what else have we got there? Cognitive, spiritual, and a, a whole range of different areas. And actually pick out a couple of things from that area one that feels a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So, I mean, easy example is running. So if I'm running 5Ks, a little bit outside of my comfort zone is maybe to run 10Ks. Pick one thing that's a little bit outside and one thing that really, really scares you. So again, if we use, say, running for an example, that 5K runner, maybe running an ultra marathon is, is really, really scary. But having, being able to set that direction is super valuable so that you know kind of you can you can figure out the first step that you need to take another strategy that that people use is understanding why they want to do it why it's important to them yeah i could go out and i could run an ultra marathon but what would i get from it why would why would that be important for me well for for me as an example it would uh it would give me a chance to challenge myself physically. It would give me a chance to go out and explore. It would improve my health. It'll improve my fitness. And with that, it'll make me a nicer person to be around as well. So understanding why you want to do something really keeps you going when the going gets tough. And if you can tie that why back as well, not just to what it gives you, but to what it gives the people around you. Um, so the people that, you interact with the people that you love and the people that you lead, if you can tie it back to something that's valuable for them, then again, when it gets hard, it's so much easier to keep going with because you've got this accountability for other people as well. Um, I'm in the process at the moment of kind of creating a bit of a book around uh, 25 or 30 different strategies, just little ones that you can use uh, to, to help get out of, out of your comfort zone. Um, one that I, one that I really like, uh, that, that people could go and go away and, and have a look at at the moment is Tim Ferriss's, uh, Ted video on fear setting, which is, is amazing. Um, really, really helpful when you have an uncomfortable decision to make that is probably needs a little bit more in-depth thought. Um, so yeah, Google, Google Tim Ferriss, Ted fear setting. Um, but just a, like a basic strategy to help you get over, get over the first hump is to just kind of create some, some like a short mantra or a short positive self talk for yourself to uh, just say to yourself when things are tough or when you, when you just need to move forward. So um, one of my favorites from one of my guests is uh, you only live once. You don't want to miss out on this. So if, there, if there's an opportunity sitting in front of you and he's a little bit reluctant, that's what he'll say to himself. It just G's him up and he can go and, and step into it. But there's a, a vast array of, of different, slightly different strategies that, that people use that, that work well for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Chris. Now, obviously, if somebody's watching this right now and you know they've been moved by um, some of the things that you have uh, mentioned or they want to be a part of um, you know your movement and maybe contribute to your podcast how can people get a hold of you um, the easiest way is to just well if you want to listen to the podcast first then the amazing stories uh, is just to search for it on your favorite podcast app uh, the, the title is uncomfortable is okay 
uh, and yeah, great stories with a vast range of, array of different people. Um, you can reach us on social media, uncomfortable is okay, or find me on LinkedIn, Chris Desmond, uh, or just send me an email. Is uh, the email address is uncomfortable is okay at gmail dot com, um, and there will be some. I'm in the process at the moment of developing a lot, a lot more resources around it as well, like this, the strategy booklet, um, as well as some training and, and coaching for, for people to help them step outside of their comfort zones as well. So if you follow along with the podcast, you'll see when that comes out. Absolutely. Now, um, just one last question before we actually sort of let you go. Would you think there is um, a correlation or would you think there's the same uh, thing having limited limiting beliefs and, um, you know, s stepping outside of your comfort zone? Is there anything that you would need to do in order to succumb that or being in your comfort zone um, is, is basically a, a, a general mindset? I think, um, yeah. Uh, and I think being in your comfort zone is, it isn't a bad thing, as I said. Right. That it's, where we're, it's where we're the most relaxed. It's where we're the most, uh, obviously the most comfortable. It's important to step outside of our comfort zones. But once we've stepped outside and we've, we've taken on the challenge and stressed ourselves out, it's good to come back in to our comfort zone for a little while to, to recover. Uh, the problem is, is when we don't step outside of it, ever it's the that's the big challenge and that leads to a whole lot of people leaving leading uh, unfulfilling lives in my opinion the limiting beliefs and uh and the comfort zone i think uh that that intricately intertwined and i think one of the one of the best things to do uh in regards to overcoming that to, to get out of your comfort zone and start to lead a more fulfilling life is to is to start to work on your self-awareness about what it is that you want who it is that you are as a person what it, what excites you and don't just buy into all of the all of the marketing and all of the, the conversation around hey you need this uh, consumer product to be happy or you need to be doing this to be to be happy is to to stop and ask yourself some questions about actually why do i think this way does what i'm being told here or does what i'm telling myself here with my own limiting belief fit in with who i am as a person and what i want to achieve and is it actually real what it is that i'm telling myself there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about fake news at the moment. We sell ourselves a whole lot of fake news as well, with our limiting beliefs and that that kind of negative thought pattern uh, that, and negative inner critic that goes on inside us. That yeah, watch watch out for that fake news. I think is the is the message from that one. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Chris. Um, you know for your time and value that you have dropped on this show today i mean if you're watching this show right now you can actually uh see that it's much easier to re remain within the boundaries of where you feel comfortable than it is to actually face that fear and venture beyond them and like what chris has elaborated he and himself has found success has found fulfillment within his life just because he's stepped out of um you know his comfort zone so if you could do yourself a favor and, um, you know, venture out. You never know what's on the other side of your limiting beliefs. Now, Chris, I can't thank you enough for the time and the value that you've dropped with us on the show today. Uh, my pleasure, Prosper. Thank you for making me slightly uncomfortable today, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. Bye for now.